And welcome back to American Agenda. I'm Heather Childers. Uh, the U.S. women's soccer team among the squads to kneel before their matches, even donning hoodies uh, with Black Lives Matter across the front to protest racism, discrimination, and inequality. This happened at the Tokyo Olympics as the games officially begin. But, and there's the picture of them right there, turns out the U.S. team lost to Sweden 3-0. to and one player, Megan Rapino, didn't seem too upset about it, saying this, it's an opportunity for us to continue to use our voices and use our platforms to talk about the things that affect all of us intimately in different ways. Well, since this isn't the first time that we're seeing these statements being made ahead of our games, this begs the question, are Olympic athletes more concerned about making a statement than actually winning? Let's bring back in our panel to talk more about this. And how I'll start with you. There's a saying going around, um, go woke, go broke. Kind of need to keep winning in order to get your message out there. <laughs> yeah, you, you certainly do. I mean, you know, you wonder if this is maybe happening because uh, you saw three of the players were standing. Mm -hmm. You know, is there some discontent within the, the soccer team between those that don't have the same views on wokeness as as some of the, the outspoken ones on the team. And so, you know, we're going to see if they can pull this off. They, they've lost in the past, but that was, you know, 12, 13 years ago when they lost an opener uh, at the Olympics. So it's a different team now. Uh, I, you know, it, what's sad to me is that we probably have quite a few people in our country actually rooting against this soccer team because of their outspoken uh, wokeness that they have and their, their disdain for the country is what it seems like. So. You, you know, I, we'll see what happens here. I, I don't have any way to judge whether they're going to be able to pull off another gold medal or not, but it's certainly uh, being used as a platform that it shouldn't be used for, which is, you know, to make to probably try to sell books or get product deals uh, as opposed to, to winning soccer games. Yeah, uh, Jesse Jane, we had the um, leader of the young um, Miami Republicans on um, earlier to talk some about, you know, what it means to be an American and the situation going on in Cuba because her parents were from Cuba. And she said, you know, it really hurts her heart when she sees people doing like something like this uh, when they're Americans and not really realizing that we should all be in it together as Americans. Well, the captain of this team is Megan Rapinoe, and she had made a name for herself by starting the kneeling with the soccer team when she was an active player. She now, to me, has poisoned her own team. She's a known feminist. They had Black Lives Matter apparently apparel on, and then they kneeled during the national anthem. I will tell you, as a Marine, you don't kneel before you go in for a fight. It puts you in an oppressive mode. It puts you in a diminished mode. You stand. And that is a critical mindset to going in before you have to go into this battle, so to speak, mm -hmm. of winning a game. I also appreciate what Hal says. You've got some of them standing and the bulk of them kneeling, regardless whether they some stood and some kneeled. Why are they representing this country kneeling to a force that is developed behind Marxism ideology, where the leader of Black Lives Matter had three mansions off of the mm -hmm. money? There's no accountability yeah. where it's gone. It's, a, it's upsetting as Americans to watch this, and they're right. We're not rooting for them now. Right. <laughs> uh, Derek, your, your thoughts on this? Uh, I'll end it quick. I agree with Al. I think there's, there, there's dissent this, between, the, between the players mm -hmm. with the people kneeling and some of them standing. I think that. In addition to that, I also go, they lost three to nothing, which says to me, you're not focused. As a coach, I coached a little league football and all that kind of seven years. You're not focused. You got your ass kicked. That's what happened. And the second thing is, you don't have to look. Look at all the people trying to come across this border right now mm -hmm. into America. If America was that bad, you wouldn't have all these people right now trying to cross and get into this country. And it just sickens me that the same country that allowed you the opportunity to get on that stage, that international stage, and then you're going to turn around and show you show off like this. I just, I, it sickens me. And I'm outraged by it. Yeah, what would you say to uh, any of the kids that you coach if they tried to pull a stunt like this and they weren't really presenting themselves as a team on the world stage? Well, again, I always preach there's no I in team, mm -hmm. first and foremost. There's no I in team. And this is about us. It's not about you as an individual. And to me, that seems like what's going on right, right now with the soccer team is about individuals and not about the team. Yeah, another example, uh, Jesse Jane, as we wrap up here, um, of, you know, going woke. 
Well, when we see that this soccer team is not standing for the very nation that sends them over there, they cannot be surprised when Americans don't root for them. It's simply as that. And the IOC modified, the International Olympic Committee modified their rules. Shame on them. They had a strong stance of no political um, statements, no religious statements, doing nothing of the sort, and they enabled this. So there's a lot of characters involved that have allowed this to happen, but I blame the coach of that team. Megan Rapinoe took her baggage to that team instead of focusing on winning. Yeah, Hal, a final word on this. Yeah, I mean, I think that we need to, as a country, uh, make a decision that we're not going to allow our players, if they're going to represent the United States in the Olympics, they can't have these uh, anti-American political statements during the Olympics. If they want to do it prior to the Olympics, uh, as long as they don't do it during the Olympics, I don't think that should be allowed. Uh, and if they don't like it, then they don't have to go over there and play and represent the United yeah. States. It'll be very interesting to see what the ratings are like for folks watching it, because I think a lot of folks just looking on social media were expecting this to happen and saying that they just wouldn't be watching because they didn't want to see all these political statements. They just wanted to see the athletes and they wanted to see them winning as well. All right. Hal Lambert, Jesse Jane Duff and Derek Hawley. It's been a pleasure, as always. Thank you for joining us. Thank, Thank you. you. And everyone, stick around. We'll be right back with a little bit more of American Agenda after this. Stay with us.